Good evening and welcome to Spartan Stadium for tonight's matchup between the Tenora Rams and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Bill Sammons. And Bill, have an excellent matchup tonight against two teams here early in the season where you know, LCC 2-0 here in the young season. Tenora 1-1. Got off to a little bit of a rocky start against an excellent Liberty Center team, but got back on track last week, getting their first victory of the young season. Yeah, we got two big high-powered teams coming off great 2021 campaigns. I mean, they they have high expectations this year, both teams. Both teams have just big-time play potential. Tenora has speed. Um, we know that LCC has Carson Parker. I mean, they got all other a lot of kids around him, too, so it should be a fun game tonight. Yeah, you had Tenora, a team that's kind of almost reimagined themselves kind of on the fly they've had a lot of turnover uh, in their backfield and on the other side of the football for LCC you know you mentioned Carson Parker can pretty much do anything the kid is good at everything whether it's through the air whether it's on his feet but he also has weapons around him it's a very difficult offense to, to try to stop and Tenor is going to have their hands full, but they really hang their hats on the defense. Yeah, they need to create turnovers on defense. They got five of their leading tacklers back on defense this year. They, ha Like you said, they hang their hat on their defense, and luckily so because I tell you what, you need to create turnovers against this very high-powered offense in LCC. They are highly disciplined, they're extremely efficient, and they're a well-oiled machine. If you don't get turnovers against LCC, they will hurt you sometime during the game. Should have an excellent game on our hands, and when we return, we will have the opening kickoff. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Star Spartan Stadium, just about underway. LCC is going to receive the first half kickoff. As they are lining up, Tenor is going to kick it away to the north end of the stadium today. Yeah, this, this will be an interesting contest. We got a... Uh, uh, Tenora, who really hangs her hat, like we said before in pregame, on their defense. But you got this high-powered offense in LCC with the lead, the guy who's steering the ship there, Carson Parker. He does it all. We're talking running, passing, but he's really done a lot this year with his feet and his legs. And like you said a little bit when our conversation, he's taken a lot of lumps this year. He's taken a lot of pops this year. So they got to find another guy, you know, to hang their hat on also. Yeah, and it, you know, the connection between him and Matthew Guatman have, has just been phenomenal this season. When those two have been able to, to make the deep play work, um, LCC has just seemed unstoppable at times. Right, so the kickoff is away. It's going to go through the back of the end zone, so LCC is going to bring it out on the touchback to start their first possession. But, you know, LCC's had to be an interesting start to the beginning of their year. You know, they start with the in-city rivalry, Shawnee LCC game, you know, a lot of hype. You know, since last year, LCC gets the revenge in that game, able to get that W back from Shawnee. But, you know, Shawnee was another team that offensively maybe not as strong, but really hangs their hat on that defense. The defense did a good job that night, but eventually LCC wears them down, wears them down, wears them down. And then last week against St. John's, the offense comes alive and they put, you know, the scoring comes a little bit easier. Carson Parker really got it done on his legs in that game. So they've kind of seen a, a little bit of both. The offense has done a nice job. The defense has had to step up at times as well. So we'll see how that goes here tonight on their first possession. Carson Parker is going to carry it. Right off the right side, nice gain on first down, about five yards. Yeah, that's the power lead right there, and you can see they do a nice job. I tell you what, uh, something that uh, LCC does a good job was is they're pulling their guards. They really did a good job of pulling their guards, kicking out guys, really blocked down really well. Um, uh, now, now Tenora's uh, defensive line isn't as stout as uh, LCC's offensive line. We'll see if that wears on them later on. And that time you saw a big hole opened up for Carson Parker and. He doesn't need a lot of room, so if you're Tenori, you're going to want to fill those gaps quickly. Carson back in the shotgun one more time. This time it's going to be a handoff to Kajeni up the middle. Short gain on second down. It's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, that's that power lead in the right-hand side. They really love to follow the, you know, Chris Korkovich and Tyler Shipman over there. And, and I tell you what, do a nice job with uh, handling their guys in front of them. And I... Sorry about that. And that was actually Gabe Ciro oh, with, I'm the, sorry, yes. with the carry that yes. time, not Kajeni. So Cyril with the short pickup brings up third and three for the Thunderbirds. Two receivers out wide, one on the near side. Carson Parker in the shotgun. And comes in motion. Parker is going to keep it himself right up the middle. Looks like a short gain. Good stand by the Tenora defenses. That's going to bring up fourth and short here on the first possession for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, we, we talked about how 
just, you know, Joe's, Joey Geisinger, last week we heard that he was all over the field. He just, again, last two plays, making the tackle, did a great job there too. Uh, again, there's a really nice, quick defense that Tenora has, and uh, LCC's going to go for it right here. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a long cadence and try to jump off sides and then punt, but maybe, maybe they won't. Be a big play here in the early going. Parker's going to wow. take it. Great stop in the backfield by the Rams. And that's going to be a turnover or downs. Tenora with a big opportunity as they come up with the huge defensive stand. And they're going to have a short field for their first possession. Yeah, Aiden Helmke did a great job of just penetration and did a great job of uh, making a tackle for loss for two yards. I tell you what, that, that's a lot of confidence in your defense to go for it on fourth and two on your own 29-yard line. So we'll see if this uh, nips them in the butt later on here. And you could see, too, you know, you talk about a lot of confidence in your defense, believe your defense can come as a stand, but it's also a lot of confidence they have with the ball in the hands of Carson Parker yes. and this Thunderbird offense. You're not going to see too often you know, negative plays out of this offense, but Tenora, huge opportunity here to start the game. So now Gavin Eckert going to go under center. Eckert takes the snap. He's going to keep it as he rolls out to the right, looking for his receiver. Nice pitch and catch that time. As Carson Parker, now on the defensive side of the ball, just got his hands on Brandon Edwards and knocked him out of bounds after about an eight-yard game. Yeah, Brandon Edwards is a straight a state track uh, individual, went to state track, and I tell you what, you just get him, get it to him in space and let him do his things, and that was a real nice, easy seven-yard gain for uh, Tenora. And I'll tell you what, that's, you know, we, we had heard leading up to this, you know, coming from several different people, Tenora run. They're going to yep. be a run heavy. Yep. They don't throw the ball very often. First play, first possession, roll out, gotten the ball yes. into the air. Yes. So now Eckert, once again under center, going to be a handoff up the middle. Looks like that's going to be enough for a first down. That's going to be our first Union Bank first down of the night. Yeah, did a great job there. Nice penetration. Uh, uh, just controlling the offensive line right now of, uh, of LCC. And I, I, it was a great play call, like you said. Uh, they run almost like a wing T style offense and they lost their uh, quarterback from last year he's a four-year starter last year he had uh, I think he had over 1300 yards and he threw the ball all over the place but now like you said they had to find themselves again this year and they're finding themselves more in a run type of offense it was really neat for them to come out and start throwing the ball a little bit so now Tenora with a little bit of a drive here as they've gotten the ball inside the red zone going to be on the 19-yard line. Looks like there might be some conversations happening yeah. with the officials. Potentially something going on with after the, uh, yeah, it's a dead ball foul of some sort, I think. Actually, I think they may actually be looking at the uh, the clock, trying to see if they can't get the clock reset Play clock. Uh, correctly. They're going to kill it as it looks like it might be, may be may, excuse me, may be malfunctioning. Yes. They're just going to keep the time on the field. field. Yeah. And the official will raise his hands when it gets to be 10 seconds then. The person in the white hat there. So now Tenora trying to see if they can't get on the board Four here house. early. Here's your wishbone. Three in the backfield for Eckert as they're going to motion out. Brings everybody in a little bit closer. Hand off, off the left side. Nice job by the Thunderbirds. Great second effort, though. A lot, not a whole lot of yards, but, man, he earned every single one of those that time as number 24, Dallas Dockenhouse, takes the handoff off the left side, only picks up one, but second and third effort that time kept up for me in a negative play. Great, great second, third effort. That's just strength in the legs. Ethan Frankhauser actually had him for a four-yard loss. If he could have finished it with his legs on that tackle, it would have been a four-yard loss. But like you said, great second effort to at least give him some positive yardage here. Second at nine. Just under nine minutes left to go here in the opening quarter. Tenora, second and nine from the 18-yard line. Going to roll out to his right. Loses his footing. He's going to fall down as... He was trying to readjust. Tenora did a nice job of picking up the blitz. Looked like he might have had an avenue, but couldn't keep his footing. That's going to bring up third and long. Yeah, that's something that an offensive coordinator just hates when you get those negative yardage. You at least want to get a positive. You just want to get positive yardage. But again, when you don't have your footing and you slip underneath yourself, loss of like six yards right there. So now what kind of play are you going to do here? Are you going to try to get all 15, or you want to get just a chunk so you can get a nice little field goal? So... 
And it doesn't look like Tenora no. has attempted a field goal right. yet this season, so you almost wonder if this is two plays. Yep, two down territory. So right. try to get some back here and see if you can't pick up the first down on four. Eckert out of the shotgun this time. Good motion. Nope. Eckert rolls to his right. Left hander lets this one fly and incomplete as they're going to say that one bounced off the ground. Almost able to gather that one in. Looks like that pass was to 11. Number 11, yep. Cole Anders. Couldn't quite pick that one up off of the carpet. It's going to bring up fourth and long, and they're going to try a long field goal, it looks like. Yeah, this is this is a long field goal. I mean, this is not a, a short attempt. It's going to be a 37, uh, about 30, I'm almost, yeah, 37 yarder. It's going to be 25, 35. She looks like it's going to be 42. About a, over a 40 yard yeah. field goal attempt here. So. Number 44, Jacob Bishop's going to give this one a shot. The kick is up. And he oh, had great length on it, but ends up just short as it's going to bounce off the crossbar. Yeah, he had the windows back, too. So turnover on downs by the Rams, who had a great opportunity after stopping LCC on fourth down their last possession. Unable to come up with any points on that time. Well, I tell you what, uh, LCC knew something we didn't know, apparently, going forward on fourth down right there. Uh, they had a lot of confidence in their defense, and that gives them a lot of boost and momentum here to go for it, like we said on fourth down, when you know that you can stop uh, Tenora from scoring any points when they start around the 20-yard line and 30-yard line. Now LCC coming out for their second possession, trying to see if they can not have a little bit better result this time. Carson Parker sets the man in motion. Takes a snap out of the shotgun. He's going to hand it off. Tries to get around on the edge, but he's going to stop. And that's going to be another. Doesn't look like he lost any yardage, but got back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Yeah, G Gavin Eckert. Is that his name, Eckert? Yeah, Gavin Eckert did a great job of coming up and making a nice one-yard loss. He read that. and then what, Usually you don't get that from cornerbacks, especially in high school, because they'll always think about the pass, always think about the pass. When you get your corners into that uh, run game, then you're really going to be successful. And, and Tenora right now has that going. Payne Cutlip had that carry for LCC. It's, did end up losing a yard on that play. It's second 11. Parker going to air this one out. Incomplete pass as he was trying to find his favorite receiver and Matthew Quatman. Quatman not able to hang on, hang on to that one, and we're going to have third and down for third and long, excuse me, for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, that was a first, uh, as far as I got right here, first attempt for a pass, incomplete. Great pass, but it was a great, better defense on that than, than a pass. I tell you what, and he has a nice arm. Uh, Carson really does. So third and long for LCC. Got spread here. Carson Parker back in the shotgun as he's been the entire game so far. Parker looking to air it out. And what a great play of that time. Six. Number 76, Landon yes. Newsom had his back to the quarterback, but it's almost like he read the eyes. He knew that the ball had to be coming through on the screen and just threw his hands up, was able to get it on and knock it down. I tell you what, that's hard to coach. And this is going to be interesting. I don't think they're going to go for it here, but they got a little flag. I don't know what the flag is for. Yep, it's waved off because it was tipped. The ball was tipped, so there's no pass interference. And also the, the receivers behind line of scrimmage. But like you said, it's almost like he felt the force. You know, it's almost like he knew the play was coming. And sometimes when that offensive lineman doesn't block you, you know the screen's coming, so you might as well put your arms up. And it just got in the way, for, luckily for Tenora. So we talked about Carson Parker and what he's able to do with his arms and his feet, but he's also the punter for the Thunderbird team. He stands back to send this one away. It's a clean punt. It's going to bounce around the 45 and roll across the 50. Down to... 42 yard line, excuse me, 47 yard line, and that is where Tenora will come out for their second possession of the game. Yeah, this is this is going to be a uh, they they got to get some type of a drive going, even if they don't even if they don't score, they got to get some type of drive going. Uh, usually, the first series, the offensive coordinator has a script, and he does his script, and off of the script from the first series, he finagles what plays he wants to do the rest of the game. So we'll see what he wants to hang his hat on right here. They're still, of course, doing this kind of a wing T style offense of a run, but they've actually passed it about 50 percent of the time. Eckert with the toss off to the left side, cut back up through. As you see, Brandon Edwards able to get a nice chunk of real estate that time as he picks up eight yards, bring up second and short. 
Yeah, that's his third carry. And uh, I tell you what, he's a fast kid. He can get it up in there right now. And he sees a hole, and, he, and it's one cut. He's going. He has potential to break it long, too. And I can tell you this much, too, is if you would have told the Tenora coaching staff after two possessions, LCC was going to yet have a first down. They've taken that all day long, and they, oh, they yeah. have to capitalize, though. Yep, yes, yes. Eckert takes the snap. He's going to roll out to his right. Tries to get it out to Edwards as he was feeling the pressure. Couldn't quite get enough behind that football to get it out there to him, so it's going to bring up third down. Yeah, and Edwards is wide open. I think we both saw if he would at least caught that ball, he would have easily gotten the first down and more. But, uh, again, it was just tough with all that pressure getting in your face. And if Tenora has a screen, you know, now's the time to do it. But, again, with short yardage, I don't know if they should do it this time. but and It's a lot easier said than done, especially yes. sitting up here. But, you know, yep. Eckert has to have a little bit more trust in his line. They've done a nice job. Yep. Those blitzes have come, and he's had the pressure. They've picked it up. He's had time where he could have set his feet. But, you know, it's hard. you got all those yes. people around you. You get a little panicky, you get rid of the football in that time. Uh, that's what happened there as well. Eckert, handoff up the middle. That's going to be another Union Bank first down as Tenor is going to move the chains. Nice trap right there. That was number 24. Um, we got here 24. Oh, Dallas, Dakenhaus. Yeah, Dallas did a great job of hitting that hole. It's really hard for high school kids to hit a trap because usually it's not where it starts, it's where it ends. You got to follow the offensive lineman, and he did a great job. Dallas did of following that offensive lineman and getting the yards he needed for the first down. Denora staying with the eye and able to have a little bit of a drive on both their possessions, hoping to extend it here. Edwards out to the right side, cuts it up for about a four-yard gain. Yeah, Alex Homier just basically missed that defensive end. If he could have blocked the defensive end, that would have went for another four or five yards. You got to get that first line of attack, and you need to block that first line of attack, and he just kind of turned it upfield a little bit too much. But uh, again, it's a positive gain, and as long as you got three and a half yards, like you know, it's kind of the style of offense that Tenor is doing right now. It's kind of a wing T style offense, three and a half yards, and a cloud of dust is what Tenor wants to do right now. Trying to take it right to this defensive line of the Thunderbirds, trying to see if they can't pop the big one here as Eckert goes into the shotgun. Sets a man in motion. Eckert. We're going to have a false start, though, on the offense, and that's going to push Tenora back. And they can't afford no, too many they can't. unforced errors like that. You're exactly right. You, you hit the nail right on the coffin when you said that. I was just about ready to say Tenor is doing exactly what they need to do. Well, number one, have a nice, long, continuous drive, and that drive keeps the ball out of Parker's hands. As long as Parker doesn't have the ball, Tenora is going to be in good shape. And this nice, long three and a half yards, three and a half yards type of drive and style of offense is really going to hurt LCC. But, I mean, if you're shooting yourself in the foot like that, it ain't going to happen. So now Tenora goes from second and seven to second and 12. Eckert's going to go back up underneath center. Two in the backfield with him. Keep it himself this time, but nowhere to run. The Thunderbirds all over. Actually knocked the ball loose. Fumble. And the LCC is able to recover. So things went from bad to worse for Tenor on that possession as the penalty pushed him back. And then on the very next play, they cough it up. Yeah, did a great job. I think with number 58, I don't have his uh, name, but number 58 recovered the fumble. And if you were to actually look at that on film, I really thought his forward progress has actually stopped. And then he fumbled the ball. But, you know, he, we don't got uh, instant replay here. And uh, the officials uh, were right on Johnny on the spot there. And they said it was a fumble right away. So this is big for uh, LCC. See if they can capitalize on this. Cole Gross was... The lineman who comes up with that fumble recovery is LCC now going to try to capitalize on the turnover. So Sierra switch sides now. It's Parker waiting for the snap. Pulls it back. Going to try to air it out. Goes deep. Wow. What a great defensive play by Caden Radzik. Is able to hang in the air and knock that one loose as Parker was trying to find number 12, Sal Gugeni, in that. 
Yeah, I tell you what, Parker's third attempt has not completed a pass yet and almost completed one for a touchdown. But I tell you what, what a great, great defensive play. He was beat deep, but because of his speed, he, his, it's called closing speed. And he had that great closing speed to make a play, and they can basically live to play another day. Now, if you're LCC, though, you do take away from that one. If, you know, Carson throws that one a little bit farther, yep. that leads him a little bit more. Yep. That's an easy six. Yep. Tenor is going to have to try to prevent them from coming deep. Parker, though, he's going to keep this one on the ground, tries to roll out to the right side. He's met by a host of Rams. It's going to bring up no gain in a third and ten situation. Yeah, Grady Gustweiler did a great job there. Nice open field tackle on, uh, on, on on Carson. I tell you, you can if you can tackle Carson anywhere in the open field, that's great. You know, so that brings it to a third and long situation. And right now, third and long has not been LCC's friend. They have not been able to complete passes on third and long. So we'll see what they got here. And right now, it just seems like LCC is just a, a step slow. Not yep. you know. Not quite sure what's going on, just right. kind of having a hard time getting to the rhythm right now. Parker going to air this one out. Pass is complete to Quatman. Quatman's able to get out near the 40-yard line. It's going to be down at 42. It's going to bring up fourth and short. I'd imagine we'll see LCC go for this one. Yeah, they're going to go for this one, but i tell you what, Grady Gusweiler again. Great blitz. Got his hand in the Carson's face and forced Carson to throw it a little bit earlier than when he should have. If he would have waited a bit longer, then he would be able to get that first down. But I tell you what, Grady did a good job of uh, getting his face on that blitz. So we're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll see wants to talk about it. We'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is sponsored by Xenomy Cemetery. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. Taking a look at the scoreboard, 325 left to go here in the first quarter, 0-0 tie, but LCC trying to see if they can't get their first first down of the night. Yeah, this is this has been tough for it. Tenora's defense has been tough, but when you're on the field so much, bad things can happen. So we'll see here what happens in fourth and three. Parker sends a man in motion. Going to pull this down as he rolls to his right. Looks to air it out. Tries to get it to Kajeni, but looks like he's going to be out of bounds, and he is. So it's going to be another turnover on downs. The Rams' defense steps up one more time. Yeah, Grady Gusweiler again for the third straight time. Blitzes up the middle and forces Carson to throw the ball again, not as accurate as they would have because of the pressure that was on him. So you got to give your hats off this Tenora defense. And like you said, LCC has just not found their rhythm yet. I think that's huge right now. Neither team has found their rhythm yet. LCC still searching for their first first down of the night. So now they have to go on the to the defensive side of the ball. Tenora trying to see if they can have an extended drive. They've had a little of success before the last time a penalty and a turnover stopped that drive. Eckert under center. Toss out to Edwards. Edwards trying to find some room. He's able to get up, and we've seen Edwards be able to have some luck on that. Um, either side, really right and the left side. He does a nice job, picks up eight yards that time. Yeah, he has right now 18 yards for just four on four carries. I mean, this kid can really find the holes, and that's just basically a power right, which every lineman will block down and, and you kick out. Very simple play, but I tell you what, that's what Delphi St. John's actually hangs their hat on a lot, too. But it's a great play if you just want to gain four or five yards, but they got a good nine yards on that chunk. Good first down play. Now they got an option. Second one, do you want to go ahead and shoot a long ball or do you want to go for the first down? Becker comes under center one more time on second and one. Handoff up the middle. Edwards has all sorts of room. And Tenora going to pick up another first down. Yeah, that's Edwards' uh, fifth fifth carry for, again, over 20 yards. And uh, he's just finding the holes. It's a simple belly. It's a man-on-man. -man, and and they're, they're finding the seams right now on LCC. Tenora with another first down. It's a Union Bank first down. Union Bank is committed to you. I, I tell you what, if I was Tenora, stay with the same until they stop it. So we'll see if Tenora stays with that same offensive style between the tackles right now is where they're running it. Tenora now coming down into the eye. Eckert under center. Hand it off one more time to Edwards. Edwards just following his lead blocker. Gets out for another eight-yard gain, and right now Tenora is picking up good chunks of yardage, just taking it right at the defensive line of LCC. You nailed it right on the head. I mean, 
that they're taking it right at LCC. I mean, they're not trying to go around them. They're just going right, right, right at the middle. And they're really running the big man. That's, a, a you know, uh, McKee. And he's uh, five foot 11, 320 pounds. And they're just basically down blocking and kicking out. So, again, a good gain of seven yards right there. So second and three for the Rams. They're on the 37-yard line trying to see if they can't get on the board. And off. Up the middle, a little misdirection that time. Going to be a short gain to bring up third and short. Yeah, that's your counter right there. That's your counter, and I just said McKee, and, and he just makes a great tackle right there. Did a good job of keeping his gap, made a great tackle, didn't really fall for the counter too much. It's going to be really difficult to counter this LCC defense. They're very disciplined, and they're very strong and quick. So it's very difficult to counter a defense that does that. But third and one, I'm assuming this is going to be two-play two territory here for Tenora. You know, and if you're LCC, you got to think that you know what Tenora's going to do here, and Tenora's fine with that because LCC so far hasn't been able to stop it. Exactly. And we're going to have your flag false. again. It's going to be defensive offsides it Ooh. looks like this time. So I was going to say it's hopefully gonna be encroachment on the defense. So an automatic for well not an automatic excuse me but the yardage is going to result in a first down for Tenora. You know we talked about it on the last drive Tenora shooting themselves in the foot on you know, the false start penalty but this time it's LCC helping out the Rams as they're going to move down and get a fresh set of downs. Yeah, and, and, and like you said, that's an easy first down right there for Tenora. You know they got four four down territory again right here. And so it's going to be, uh, are they going to stay with the same and keep with the power? You know, or are they going to maybe switch it up a little bit and go ahead and go up top? And I'll be surprised if they throw the ball at all here. 25 seconds left to go here in the opening quarter. Tenora, their longest drive of the game, trying to see if they can't put the Thunderbirds on their heels. Eckert takes the snap, going to air is. it out. The left-hander lets this one fly. He's got a receiver downfield, and it's going to be picked off. A huge interception for the Thunderbirds on the one-yard line. And it's it either. looks like that's going to be Gajeni coming up with the interception. And Tenora that time trying to take a shot. But Gajeni with the great defense comes up with the interception and LCC will take over on the one yard line. Yeah, like I just said, uh, he, he just kind of took that right out of my mouth. And I get where he's coming from. I mean, first and 10, you got four plays, your offense is looking great. Uh, but I just wouldn't take a chance against this LCC defense because they're athletes. Every one of these guys are athletes. And uh, Gajeni did a great job of stepping up. Man turned it, got his nose in his ear and, and it had a great high point interception. And uh, I it just, you know, with that Tenora offense, run offense is working so well, keeping it out of Carson's hands. I was really surprised at that. Now this Rams defense has come up with some negative plays in this first quarter. They could use one right here, see if they can't get Parker in the end zone. Handoff. And we're going to have Sierra runs right up the middle. And that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. LCC and Tenora after one tied at zero. LCC with the football when we return on WOSN. Welcome back to Yosemite Cemetery. It's tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. LCC going to start the second quarter. Still in the shadow of their end zone, but able to pick up a few yards to give themselves some breathing room on the last play of the first quarter. And we are talking in between the breaks. The offense really right now struggling. Carson Parker still looking for his first completion of the game. And LCC still looking for their first first down of the game. Yep. Parker's going to take the snap, going to keep it himself. Goes up the middle. Tenora does a nice job of swarming the football that time. He's Parker's taken down. It's going to bring up third and short. Yeah, 12, Braden Rostad did a good job of uh, just, just nice tackle and finishing up the tackle. Uh, LCC might get themselves out of this here. This is going to be a third, a three and a half right now. And this would be an interesting play call right here if he's going to throw or he's going to run the ball. Because I tell you what, with uh, Brandon and uh, Gavin on the outside corners at the quarterback running back for Tenora, they're so fast. They could man up their guys. Sierra in the backfield with Parker. Parker takes the snap. He's going to air it out. He's able to get his first completion, but the ball's loose. They're going to say fumble. Dang. Tenora looks like they came up with it. Now another official runs in and says incomplete yeah, pass. Yeah, that's a good call. 
And I, I, I agree with you. I think that's a good call. It doesn't look like there was a football move made that time. The hit came almost immediately to knock that ball loose. So it's going to bring up fourth down and LCC still looking for the first completion of the game and first first down as Parker's going to have to pump this one away standing in his own end zone. Yeah, we're talking about it's just quickness tonight. I mean, two defenses that are very quick. The DBs are very quick. Great job on the DB driving on the ball and causing a nice uh, incompletion right there. Tenora's going to get the ball in good, good territory. LCC could use a good punt from Parker. Sends this one away. It's going to be fielded at the 44-yard line. Right up the middle, great return for the Rams yes. as they're able to bring this one up to about the 28-yard line, and they are going to have excellent field position to begin this possession. Yeah, it's their best starting field position so far in the game. Now, of course, they've been in the red zone a couple times, but I can tell you what, that's their best starting field position so far. So we'll see what they can do with this uh, field position because it's hot out there. And uh, they got a lot of guys going both ways. And uh, unfortunately, when the domino starts to fall, it's going to fall hard. We've seen Tenora able to get deep into their own territory several times tonight, but haven't been able to cash in and try to change that here as Eckert gets the football on his own 29-yard line. Kudos to LCC's defense for that. Eckert under center, takes the snap. And off, off to the left side. Trying to pick up a couple extra yardage with Stock and House. He got about a two-yard gain. Yeah, that's his first or second carry, and that's his sweep. And uh, LCC, I tell you, they weren't moving on that sweep. And two guards pulled, and they had nowhere to turn up. Usually on a sweep, you have a little hole to turn up on, and they didn't have any hole at all. I mean, you're running at McKee and, and uh, Patton right there, 225 and 320 defensive tackles. It's going to be hard to move those guys. So second and eight for the Rams. Or staying in pretty much the same formation on the offensive side all night long. Man in motion, but Ecker's going to keep it this time as he turns it inside. Looked like he was going to have had an opportunity for a big game that time, but LCC doing a nice job of getting to the football and stopping him after about a pickup of about four. Yeah, you're exactly right. That was number 74 on the tackle. That was Jacob Lauken. And I tell you what, wow, he had some, like you said, closing speed when he saw that hole open up he closed jacob really came hard and closed on that six foot two 215 pound senior for lcc did a great job of stopping that ball or going in extra yardage so it's going to bring up third and five for tenora you think probably going to be in two down territory but you know the last time that they were down here we saw a, a yeah. 42 yard field goal attempt that just missed so Maybe not, but Edwards in the backfield, he's had some success and been able to pick up some good yardage tonight. See if they get him the football. Eckert sends a man in motion. He's going to look to throw. His receiver falls down and not able to pick it up, and that's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. Just just the strength of the throw. Uh, he's get it out there a little bit quicker, but I was surprised he didn't hand the ball off. Now, uh, for field goal-wise, that, that, that wind's blowing at a good part 10 miles an hour right out of his face. So they're going to think about it and call timeout here. So that's going to be a timeout. Tenora now going to talk about it. Big fourth down for the Rams when we return on WOSN. <laughs> Welcome back. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. And Tenora now looking to pick up a Union Bank first down as Eckert goes under center with three in the backfield. He's going to send one in motion. Eckert takes a snap. Going to keep it himself, tries to roll out, cut it up, and LCC was there to cut him down, and yet another turnover on downs. Yeah, Matthew Quatman at the safety position, <laughs> safety position, came up, saw the end blocked down, and came up like a linebacker and made a great, great open field play right there. Five foot eight, 175 pounds. We talked about that before. When your safeties and corners are making running tackles, tackles against the running back, you know you're going to have good, good, a good day. And that's exactly what LCC's defense has been doing so far. You know, on top of them making the tackles uh, against the run, they're making tackles against the run for no yardage. Yes, that's a good point. Yardage. Yes. I mean, they're not, it's not even trying to play the run on this next level. Exactly. They're coming down and, and playing like yes. they're playing right on the line. Playing a scrimmage. So Carson Parker now. Fumble. is able to gather it back in. It looks uh -oh. like 
and it looks like he was able to gather yep. it back in a little bit of an awkward position but he's able to grab it, gather it in and he hops up so it looks like he's going to be okay as well and it's going to bring up second in after a loss of 15 looks like four or five that time so second and long is lcc still looking a little out of sorts having a little bit of hard time on offense tonight you nailed it out of sorts is huge and, and, and he, you got to give your hats off to this Tenora defense. Just mind-boggling. They're, they're just going crazy. I mean, they're, they're really fast. They're very fast. Four receivers for Parker. Keep it himself. Tries to go up the middle. Off that left side. Not a whole lot of room that time. Maybe a pickup of one or two. I tell you what, that, that, that's a host of Rams uh, making that tackle because uh, they blitzed three linebackers right there so that's seven guys going against the run and they know that Carson's having an issues right now kind of completing the pass so they're taking chances and they're having their two uh of course their two really good corners which is the quarterback and the tailback man to man for long here I imagine we try to see Parker trying to get the ball yep. out to yep. Quatman. looks like it's going to happen nope as this one goes through the middle and they're going to say incomplete that time as number 10, Ethan Frankenhauser, almost able to gather that one in off his fingertips. It's going to bring up another fourth down for LCC. Wow. He had him. He had him on his step. He just couldn't lead him uh, to the right place. And I, like you said, Frankenhauser, he, he was beat deep by a little bit. And you heard the fans rumble a little bit there because it was a little early, uh, early uh, touch. But again, I think it was a ticky tack touch, and I think it was a good call by the official. Good no call. So now Parker back, waiting to punt it away. He's able to get rid of this one clean. Good punt by Parker. Gathered it in. Cole Anders taking it off that right side, knocked out of bounds about the 40 yard line. So one more time, Tenora with the excellent field position have not been able to do anything with it yet here in this first half, trying to change that fortune here. Yeah, they've had the ball, you know, five times and four of the five have been on the, the LCC side, you know, so they got to capitalize on this. They got to at least get three points or, 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 you know, I don't know what, I mean, they, they need to do something here, but I, I tell you what, their best offense right now to Nora is their punt return. <laughs> They've done a great job on punt return and you got to give their hats off to the special team coach right there. Now Eckert, one more time coming up, trying to see if he can't get his offense going with Edwards in the backfield. Edwards is going to take the toss, try to work off the left side, but LCC just eats that one up. As you see, number 22, Matt Serra come in, dropping for a loss. Yeah, Matt Serra, six foot one, 185 pound, running like a track star right there. And what you got to see is an open window or a closed window. And he saw that open window and he did not hesitate. He went through right now. So that was a classic textbook linebacker play right there. So good for him so lcc still doing what they did before on defense it's been a defensive ball game so far i like that some people don't <laughs> but i do love defensive ball games 7 15 left to go in the first half tenora looking at a second down and 12. ecker gonna try to air it out gets it out to edwards edwards with some green in front of him gets knocked out of bounds after picking up the first down at the 25 yard line yeah, Aiden Helmke uh, did a great job of pulling as a guard. And you heard the cheers from the crowd and the, and the uh, coaches. Just a little hold he got away with with his arms so the quarterback can just get outside. He got outside and did a great job of rolling. But again, he's a lefty quarterback, so he's going to throw well on that side. It's never easy throwing on the run. but No, did a great job as an time, athlete. Yep, Ecker did a good job completing that pass. And yep. One more time, Tenora on the move. This time, handoff off the left side. You saw 36. Look, you see number 36, Cole Swinehagen, takes that carry. It's his first of the game. Able to pick up about a yard, maybe two. Yeah, I'm just surprised 
Tenora is trying counters and trying uh, some type of a long developing play because this LCC defense is so strong and, and so quick. Those long developing plays can really be snatched really fast. So I, if I was Tenora, I would, I would attack. I would go right now downhill at like the bellies they did, the powers they had. They haven't gone back to that play yet. But for Brandon, who's we, we talked about, averaged six or seven yards a game the last time he touched the ball. And we'll see if maybe they're on the same page as you. It's now they come out in the eye. They do hand it right yep, off there it to is. Edwards, right up the middle. And I, and I think you got it exactly right that time. You know, when this LCC defense has time to react, they are getting downhill quickly. They are snuffing everything out. But Tenora has had the most success when they've been able to just hand it off quick. One, one hand off, one move, right up the middle, nothing fancy. And one more time, we see another Union Bank first down by the Rams. Edwards able to pick up enough yardage and keep this drive a lot. Sometimes, uh, and I'm, I'm guilty of this also as a coach, sometimes you outthink yourself. You know, well, just give it to them. Let them go downhill and have them go attack right now. And that's exactly what they're doing because LCC, both defenses have been on the field a long time. So you might as well not just outthink it, just go and attack and see what happens. And we'll see if they continue the same thing here. Eckert, one more time to Edwards. This time a toss off the left side, but LCC was right there to stop that one for a short loss. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get outside with their linebackers with Frank Hauser and Sarah and and, and Sarah, his twin brother. Um, it's really going to be tough to get outside with those speed that they have. If they're going to be successful, Tenora, they're going to have to continue to go downhill right now between the tackles. So it's second nine right now. I know you want to pass the ball. I know you want to counter, but I really think they got to go back to what gives them seven to ten yards of carry and that's of course giving it to Brandon and let him go. Had a couple of opportunities but some untimely turnovers has stopped a lot of these Tenora drives before they've been able to put points on the board trying to avoid that here. Eckert gonna hand it off up the middle. Quick hitter. It'll be docking house. So we'll carry this one out to about the 10 yard line, bring up third and about five. Love the play, love the play. Quick hitter, that's his third carry. He's averaging about four or five yards a carry. Uh, any quick hitter has been averaging a lot of yardage here. So again, you gotta be thinking if you're a Tenora offensive guy, the wind is blowing at a good 10 to 15, I mean, it's blowing pretty good right at his face. So. Even a field goal here would be a challenge. So if I was the Tenor offensive coordinator, I'd say you got two plays to go five yards. So Tenora sends two wide receivers out to the right as Eckert now in the shotgun. Edwards lined up right next to him. Eckert's going to keep it himself. Going to try to get to the edge. Does a great job. Looked like he was going to work his way inside. Got the defenseman to lean able to go outside and able to put it in for six love 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 that call they had trips right they had three receivers to the right the third guy was a tight h-back trips but it was three receivers to the right nobody to left unbalanced line to the right so you only had the guard tackle to the left fake it to the right go to the left awesome uh awesome play and have gavin do his do, his, do the job he did Jacob Bishop now, extra point on its way. And it is good. So Tenora comes up with the first points of this game. They're on top 7-0. We'll be right back on WOSN. Yosemite Cemetery's tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. Tenora getting ready to kick this one away as they are on top. 7-0 with 3.55 left to go here in the first half. And this is a big drive for LCC as they've really struggled offensively. Haven't been able to complete a pass yet tonight. Haven't been able to pick up a first down yet tonight. This one's off the hands of the returner. It has to gather this one and just falls down on it at about the 13-yard line. And that is not how you want to this drive to start. Yeah, when things go bad, they go south real quick, and uh, you don't want that drive to start there. But the thing is, the LCC offensive squad just can't panic right now. Don't try to go into that second playbook. Do the things that you do best. Take a deep breath and just start firing away and see what happens. You still got you know four minutes left on the clock. You got your three timeouts, two timeouts left, so we'll see how it goes. Now LCC coming back out. Trying just to see if they can get anything positive going on offense. 
Barker takes a snap, pulls it back, able to get it out and completed. And I believe we're going to have a face mask on that as well as that was completed a number 10, Ethan Frankenhauser. Yeah, that makes Carson seven uh, seven attempts, one completion. I like the call because you got to give this kid a little bit of confidence, you know, let him know, hey, you're still good, you're still good. And I like the little short passes, and I think it's a good thing that the offensive coordinator needs to do, just little short passes here and there to get a little bit of confidence going. Frankenhauser's going to check out of the game. It's LCC now. They accepted the penalty, so... Really, it wasn't even a completion as yeah. it's going to be first and five. So take the completion off the board. Yes, nope. sir. And now it is second down. So it's going to be second and five. Parker going to roll to his right. Looking for an open receiver. Trying to scramble. Nice comeback. Sika Jenny trying to come back to the football and make something out of a broken play that time. But ball sails out of bounds. And that's what wide receivers need to do. They call it a mad dog quarterback. When the quarterback starts running for his life, the receivers need to break back to the quarterback, break back to the quarterback. And that's exactly what Jenny did. He broke back to the quarterback. A little overthrown, but again, it was, it was, a, it was, a, it was what he needed to do. So third and four, assuming it's going to be only a one play to go four yards here. So. Again, we're getting a little bit windy, and I see the distance, a little bit of storms action here, so hopefully we can keep it off at bay before this ends. It's a hot one here at Spartan Stadium as we have 3.29 left to go here in the first half. Carson Parker trying to get the offense going. Completes this one out to Gajeni just beyond the sticks, and that is going to be a Union Bank first down, the first one of the night for the T-Birds. Yeah, Gavin did a great job of coming up. Uh, of course, he's he's also the uh, quarterback. He's fast. Um, this is going to be interesting because Tenora knows they're going to throw the ball. They know they're going to throw the ball, but they're going to get pressure, and we'll see if uh, these LCC T-Birds know how to attack it when they get pressure. You know, we mentioned it earlier, but it just feels like at some point they're going to try to take a shot with Guatman. Yep, yep. He's lined up here on the near side, one-on-one. -on -one. But Parker's going to pull this one down on the option read, able to pick up a couple of yards. Yeah, that's. I would say it's a surprise because he's a big-time player. You you want the you want the ball into his hands. You know, you want Parker to have the ball and maybe he can break a big one. That's fine, but now you're just wasting a lot of time here. Um, a timeout would have been nice there too, but I think they're going to try to chuck it deep here. Just give him a shot and see how things go. 2.40 left to go. Both teams still with two timeouts apiece. No hurry. You know, I think too that can come from some confidence. You know, LCC knows that you know they typically are a big play offense. They can score quickly, but got to get something going offensively is once again the pressure gets to Parker and he's got a roll long pass looking for Quatman not able to connect I tell you the key for Tenora's defense and I'm seeing it now is that they're manned up and everybody's manned up they feel confident manning them up so now you got people who can blitz and that's your inside linebackers so if you can man up with your safeties and corners now you got your linebackers blitzing now you got pressure you're going to have issues and if you can man any team and you can man them up pretty good, you're going to stop throwing the ball. And I think we've seen some of the receivers from LCC open as yep. well. But when, you know, the man deep coverage doesn't have to be super tight when your quarterback's only maybe getting a second to get exactly. rid of the football. Exactly. Parker, one more time looking to air it out. This time trying to connect with Payne. That one's going to fall through his hands. Going to bring up fourth down. And, and that's what blitzing does that's what pressure does it gets you off your rhythm and i think you hit it hit the nail right on the head a couple of uh, last quarter when you said they just can't find a rhythm and that's exactly what happens and and uh, especially when you get the blitzes going you can't find your rhythm because you got guys in your face so either they got to pick up these blitzes or they got to get you know two step one step routes going here you got two speedy guys back here who could return it and you got still got two minutes left and it almost looks like this offense the, this Thunderbird offense is almost a little shell shocked. I think, they, you know, we've heard a lot about the Tenora defense, yes. but you know, until you're playing against them, you, you really can't experience what it is. As Ecker at that time tries to break free, but great tackle that time yeah. by number 58. That's Cole Gross. Yes, saw him come up with a. 
fumble recovery earlier in the game. That time, a big tackle to keep Tenora from having good field position. Yeah, he could still be running if uh, Gross didn't make that tackle. And any, any tackle on the open field is a great tackle. So now, Tenora with probably some of the worst field position they've had, which is still pretty good field position all game, uh, see if they can do anything to score some points before halftime here. You know, I think this in these situations, this is what's going to hurt this Rams offense. You know, they we've seen them there grind it out. They need to keep it on the yep, ground. Yep. As you see Eckert coming out here in the shotgun, only two timeouts and 2.11 to work with. We'll see what they try to do offensively. Low snap that time, handoff. It's, they're going to be stopped in the backfield as Cole Anders couldn't shake the LCC defender. Yeah, Cole Anders is in that motion, just kind of a jet sweep. And uh, what stops jet sweeps is penetration. That's exactly what uh, LCC is good at is penetration. And I think we talked about it when they were down here is uh, the way that Tenor has been successful is between the tackles and quick hitters. And if they can stay between the tackles and hit it really quick, they've been really successful. But anything on the outside is going to be really tough against LCC speed. So minute 30. And counting as the clock continues to run. Two timeouts apiece. It's now second and long. Tenora in the eye. There you go. Hand it off to Edwards up the That's middle. It. Edwards keeping his legs moving. He's able to get back up beyond the, the yard markers that time as LCC now is going to take the timeout. Tenora is going to be facing a third and long. Yeah, that, I think that's his... Uh... Uh, he uh, gets his, what, 10th, 11th carry, and he has almost 60 yards right now. So uh, 50 to 60, and so he's, he's uh, he meaning Brandon Edwards, their number one back, he's been really uh, their load so far. But like we said, he's been the load between the tackles, and we'll see if Tenora stays between the tackles. And I know they only have 111 right now, and I think they have one timeout left. Uh, Tenor actually has two. two uh, LCC is the one that takes it here. So Coach paulie has got to be thinking gotcha. that we're going to get this ball back even with me. With, it'll be less than a minute to go, but he's got to think that they're going to try to get some points on the board here before halftime if they can get the stop here. Exactly, and that's the key if they can get the stop. But uh, Tenora, I really don't think they need to throw the ball here. Number one, if they get an incompletion, the clock's going to stop. Number two, you can force LCC to, to call another timeout if you're running the ball, so then they don't have any timeouts left. So it's it's an advantage to Tenora because their biggest gains have been run the ball up the middle, you get seven, eight yards. And I think it's also going to get LCC off track a little bit here if you get a run right up at the middle with a third eight type of type of situation so really interesting game a big chess match here today third and eight for the rams zachert's going to be in the shotgun three receivers to his right edwards lined up next to him in the backfield hard count trying to see if they couldn't get the t-words to jump and eckert's going to call his own number tries to pull it down but loses his footing and that's going to bring up fourth down, and immediately Coach Balti calls the timeout. So now LCC going to try to see if they can't do something with this punt return and try to see if they can't put some points on the boards before they go to the locker room. That's a great point. Uh, they got to have a great punt return, number one. And number two, after the punt return, they need to have two or three plays called right now. They can't sit there and wait for the place to be called because they have no timeouts. So again, I'm sure the coach is calling at least, at least two plays after the punt return so they can just line up right away, run those two plays, and not even think about it. And hopefully they're simple plays that can cause some damage against Tenora's really speedy defense. You know, the benefit that LCC has as well is, especially in this punt or kick return, if you're Tenora, who are you going to try to keep the ball away from? Both Bajeni and Quatman. <laughs> lots of speed, lots of power, both smart players. They can Either one of them are going to cause damage if they get even a little bit of an opening. So we'll see what Tenora chooses to do here. Try to see if they maybe they try to go for the high punt to cause the fair catch or if they're going to try to somehow get this ball out of either one of those hands. Good snap. Punt is away. This one's going to take a Rams bounce as it's going to bounce down and go out of bounds at, a, at the 15-yard line. So LCC got what they wanted as the clock didn't run that time. So a minute four still on the clock. No timeouts, though. 
And they got a long way to go for any sort of points. Yeah, and like we said, I, I think he's got to have a couple plays just written up here and knowing that, listen, here's what we're going to run. Or just run these two plays back and forth, just making sure that it's quick because this is not this is faster than a two-minute offense. We're talking NASCAR style now, you know, so we have to do real quick here if they want to have any success at some points because right now they're struggling offensively. If I'm LCC, you'd almost think that they need to bring some extra help into the backfield for blocking. Just give Carson an extra yes, second or that's two a good point. and try to see if they can't connect with something deep. Because they're still going man. Parker going to roll out to his right. Going to throw it deep. Looking for Payne. Payne just out of his reach. Not able to gather it in. That was a nice thrown ball by Parker that time on the run. Covered a lot of ground in the air. But Payne not able to track it down. It's going to bring up second down. Yeah, I like what Tenora did right there. They faked like they were man to man. Then they went back to a cover two look. But really nice twist route on the outside there. Twist meaning the inside receiver went out, the outside receiver went in, and almost had Tenora. Actually had a couple steps there on uh, Tenora's cornerback. Safety, I'm sorry, safety. Number 11, Cole Anders. 57 seconds left to go. Second and 10 for the Thunderbirds. Parker going to work himself. Had a long run last week. I believe it was a 97 or 98-yard touchdown run. So he has the speed to do it, but that time Tenor is able to gather him in. It's going to be a loss of about one, so it's going to be third and 11 for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, I think they're just going to call it a quit here and just try to get out of this half unscathed so they can regroup, of course, regroup during the halftime here because uh, – they got a lot of changing to do here offensively if they're going to get on the board. It's going to be the last play of the half here as Parker waits for the snap. And Tenora's got a cover four look real deep, deep. Parker's just going to work it up the middle. Picks up a few yards. And that is going to bring the first half to a close. It has been a defensive battle. Tenora on top currently seven to nothing. It says one clock and one second left on the clock and that clip, uh, finally ticks away as both teams are going to head and try to see if they can't regroup to get their offenses going in the second half. We will step aside and be right back with second half action on WOSA. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. Nate Garlock alongside Bill Simmons as we get the second half action just about underway. And Bill, first half, nothing but defense pretty much from both sides of the, uh, of the ball, or I'm sorry, both sides of the field. It's LCC, they stood up strong. Tenora, though, just a little bit stronger, kept LCC off the board. Only one first down in that first half for LCC as Tenora's defense just time and time again came up with huge stops. Yeah, I love the, love the defensive game plan and Tenora's defense coordinator did a great job of just blitzing, blitzing, blitzing and man up everybody, getting his face, Carson's face, and make sure he's not an issue. But to help Tenora's defense off, Tenora's offense kept the ball for a long time, keeping that Tenora defense off the field. So it's been a combination right there. Tenora is going to receive the second half kickoff. This ends up in the hands of Edwards. He's going to bring it up, trying to pick up a couple of blocks. Has some space if he can get through. A couple of extra uh, yards that time as he fought for it. Gets it out to about the 37-yard line. That's where Tenora will begin their first possession of the second half. Yeah, well, this is going to be, uh, again, Tenora just needs to stay the course until something changes. Uh, LCC, we talked about their defense now. The LCC has been on a great job on the corners with their corners and safeties getting in the defensive play just because Tenora runs the ball so much. And you need those corners and safeties to come up and make a tackle. They've been doing that really well. They just haven't been doing very well between the gaps or between the tackles. Now, here comes Eckert trying to hand it off to Edwards. That's where they seem to have the most success there in the first half, just handing it off to Edwards, letting him go back up the middle. At time, a short game, probably actually the shortest of, shortest gain that he's had on that play all night is just a one-yard pickup. Yeah, you nailed it right there, too. Exactly right, because that was probably one of the shortest gains he's had between the tackles, but the reason why, he ran into his own player. You know, and if he wouldn't run his own player, he probably would have had another five yards. But again, not a bad carry, not a bad down, and uh, we'll see if it continues. It was a two-yard pickup by Edwards. Brings up second and eight for the Rams. 
Eckert under center. Takes a snap, toss goes to Edwards off the left side, trying to find a little bit of room, but not much there as LCC has done a great job pretty much all night outside of one play where Eckert took it himself on the edge. They've cut down most of those plays for short gains or no gains at all. Yeah, two Sarahs, both Sarahs and Frank Hauser just doing a great job at linebacker scraping off, and then you got Gajeni and, and Cutlip doing a great job of coming up hard and making some good tackles. And now we force, and like we said, one of the keys of the game were actually to make sure you force Tenor to throw the ball. And this is exactly what LCC is doing. Third and six for the Rams. Trying to see if they can't pick up a first down. Eckert going to go to the air. Pass through the middle. Picked off by Quatman. Quatman going to try to work to the outside. Up the sidelines. Gets drug out of bounds. But that is the type of play that LCC needed as you see that sideline fired up. Exactly, and we talked about forcing Tenor to do the things that they're not very good at. That's throwing the ball, and that's exactly what LCC did. Threw it into coverage, forced a throw, and now LCC's got some momentum. Let's see if they can keep it. That was a pretty tight window that Ecker tried to fit that one in as he was trying to get it to Cole Anders. Watman does a great job. Ball comes right to him, and LCC now going to have excellent field position to start this drive. They're I believe this might even be the first time they've been on yeah. their own side of the city. I was just about ready to say that. You're exactly right. So Parker, rough first half. Going to keep it himself. Goes up the middle. Big gain on the ground for Carson Parker. As he picks up eight, bring up second and two. Yeah, Carson Parker just was uh, stagnant, actually, the first uh, half. But now he just being a little patient with his running, letting the blockers do their work, and he picks the holes from there. We got a little injury there from number 12. Uh, that's Braden Rostai. Rostai trying to walk it off, trying to see if he can stay on the field. He's going to have to jog off. And I don't think uh, LCC needs to get fancy here until Tenora stops them. So I'd be surprised if they do put it in the air here. They marked it down only a seven yard gain. So second and three for the Thunderbirds. Sarah so in the backfield with Parker. Parker's gonna hand it off to him as he tries to work off the right side and he's gonna be stopped for maybe a gain of one. It's going to bring up third and short for the Thunderbirds. We just talked the uh, before the game, Joey Geisinger. Oh, my goodness. This guy flies to the ball. Number 34. Wow. You're talking like a player. He's He doesn't have the body of a linebacker, but he plays like a linebacker. Tough kid. Made a great play that time. 9.30 to go here in the third quarter. LCC trying to pick up a first down. Take advantage of good field position. Parker's going to bring it down himself. He's going to get the first down and then some fumble. And it looks like Tenor is going to come up with it. Wait for the official signal. And they do. The Rams come up with a big turnover as Carson Parker was trying to get some extra yardage. The Rams defense puts their helmet on the football to knock it loose to stop the Thunderbird drive. Yeah, you can't coach that. That's just something that Tenora does. They turn they create turnovers. We talked about before the game started how important turnovers were to Tenora's defense because if not, uh, I tell you what, LCC is going to come down that field hard. And you can see Carson Parker. We talked. We showed you in the beginning of the uh, third quarter. We saw uh, him get his elbow taped. Now he's just kind of looks like either he's frustrated or hurting one of the two. But I tell you what. That is a big blow to LCC right there. So now Tenora trying to come out, make something happen on offense. See if they can't. There. Edwards off the right side. And he was able to squirt through there. Not even sure where he came out of and where he disappeared to. Looked like he was stopped for sure in the middle of that defensive line of the Thunderbirds. But somehow Edwards gets loose and picks up a first down. Yeah, Sarah and Frankhauser had him wrapped up. But I tell you what, his leg strength is phenomenal. And we talked about how he's a state track, track runner. And you can see the power in his legs right there. Just keep your legs chugging. And he got a first down from that again between the tackles. Edwards does a nice job that time picking up a Union Bank first down. Union Bank committed to you. It's Edwards one more time right up the middle. This time he stopped after about a gain of maybe five. Yeah, and, and, and again, just getting a little tough and rough. Everybody's limping up there. It's just a power football in today between the tackles. And I tell you what, five yards, Tenora can – 
I know, I know you feel like you want to throw the ball or you want to do something tricky or something. Just don't be flashy. If they continue to do what they're doing right here, they're going to continue to gain some yardage because right now Brandon is averaging about six yards a carry. So he needs to continue to do what he does between the tackles, and we'll see if Tenora's uh, offensive coordinator stays with that. Was a gain of five, so second and five for the Rams. Hurry up to the line. Eckert under center. The eye behind him. And we're going to have a flag on the play. So it's going to be a false start. Delay of game. Delay of game wow. on Tenora. So we, we talked about it in the first half, an untimely penalty, and then a turnover. Stopped a couple of drives for them in the early going. And here in the third quarter, much of the same. Any wing team off wing T offense, you can't have a negative plays. And this right here is a negative play because then it forces you to throw the ball. You can't do that. You just want to get a positive play. And those little penalties right there really set you back. So we'll see what's in store here for Tenora right here. It's now Eckert in the shotgun. It's Caden Radzdick. Rad Radzik, excuse me, is up top, and Eckert tried to call his own number, but it's taken down. And it's going to be a third and long situation for the Rams. Yeah, and any time the Rams have been pulling their guards, it just the, the, the play takes so long to develop, and we talked about that in the, around the second quarter, how LCC's defense is so fast and strong that if you're going to take a long time to develop a play, they're going to sniff it out. That's exactly what they did. They sniffed it out. So now they're forced to pass the ball, or maybe they can get LCC off uh, their heels there and run between the tackles. We'll see how uh, they approach this. Third and 12 for the Rams. Ecker under center with two in the backfield. I hand it off. Cole Anders up the middle on the counter, and he gets stopped. The defensive line from LCC wasn't fooled that time, and it's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, Locke, uh, McKee, Patton, and Gross, the whole four guys on the defensive line sniffed that out. We just got done talking about how when a play takes a long time, it's hard. It's hard to uh, to gain, gain ground against LCC. So now Tenor is forced to punt here, and LCC is going to get the ball in good field position. Jacob Bishop back for the punt. Able to get it away cleanly. It's working towards out of bounds, and it's going to go out of bounds at the 48-yard line. So LCC going to have good field position here as they try to get something going on offense and try to somehow get that offense going. It seems like every time they're getting a little bit of momentum, turnover, penalty, you know, something comes up and stops their drives. Yeah, they're shooting themselves in the foot, and they, they know that too. And I'm sure the coach is saying, listen, guys, take a deep breath. Let's just hang on to the ball and let's do what we do. And they can't get out of their playbooks, stay in the playbooks, they do be very vanilla, and you're going to be successful. Um, defenses wear down. Uh, right now, Tenora has not worn down yet. We'll see if he continues here. Man up still. There's still man all across. Four receivers for the Thunderbirds. Cutlip goes in motion. Pulled back down by Parker. He's going to go deep. Looking for Quatman. Quatman's out there. In and out of his hands. Good defense by Edwards. That's a ball that if you ask Matthew Quatman, he's going to think he should have had that one. Yeah, Quatman's a big-time player, and he makes big-time plays. And right now, I know he's disappointed not catching that ball. But again, Quatman did a great job. Or uh, who was Edwards. Edwards did a great job defending that. Did a great job uh, making sure there wasn't a big play. So now we got second 10. You're in a passing situation here. We talked about the big play potential of the Thunderbird offense. And, you know, even though that one didn't connect, and they haven't been able to connect one, on one yet, they're, they're there. The opportunities yes. are there. Yes. I think they're going to continue to try to take their shots uh, when they can. So now a handoff to Sarah. Working off the left side, cuts back in, but the Rams' defense was right there. So looks like he did get back to the line of scrimmage to bring up third and ten. Yeah, Graham Askins did a phenomenal job at end forcing it deep when he forced it deep then cole anders and uh, gavin elkert did a great job of coming up hard that's your safety and corner like we talked about with lcc safety and corner making a tackle almost for a loss so uh, that's just the speed of tonor's defense right now third and 10 520 left to go here in the third quarter lcc trail seven nothing carson parker back in the shotgun as he's been all night 
takes the snap, rolls out to his right, trying to find a receiver. Good coverage by the Rams defense. Parker finally able to get rid of it, and it's going to be a first down, but it looks like there's going to be some laundry on the field. Yeah, that was it was holding. What, usually when you get a, a rollout, you're going to get a holding call. If you get some flag on there, they'll be surprised it's not a holding. There it is right there. And uh, it's hard not to hold when you got your quarterback rolling out and the guy's coming to the outside. But did you see the closing speed of linebacker Grady Gusweiler? Wow. He, get, he got in Carson's face right now and caused issues. So now uh, LCC's got a third and almost 15 to maybe even – 20 yards and I don't know how many third 20 uh, plays I have in my playbook especially against Tenora's uh, defense but I think what you're going to get here is just a fade route and uh, this might be one of the best plays that LCC might want to run right here just a fade route and a jump ball and see what happens looks like you're going to have Quatman one-on-one -on -one coverage again against Edwards yep this cut lip's going to come out as well so May have an opportunity for some one-on-one -on -one here. And if you can pick up a chunk here, you think yes. LCC would probably want to go for it. Exactly. Three wide receivers on the near sideline. Parker's going to roll out that way. Tries to get turned oh, to square oh, shoulders. And not enough time as the Rams defense gets to him. They're going to pick up a big sack, and LCC is going to have to punt the ball away. Yeah, I, I tell you what, all it is is about the speed and the and, and the blitzes that Tenor is doing right now because Quatman is open. Quatman had his guy beat, but he just doesn't have time to throw the ball. So as a defensive coordinator, either you want to get in his face or you want to cover one of the two. You can't do both against this LCC offense. And right now they're getting in his face. Now Parker back for the punt. Snap is good. Is able to get the punt away. As Tenora tried to get in there and get a hand on it. Ecker takes the punt, works to the left side. Nice stiff arm as he works up the sideline, tries to cut back, and we're going to have a penalty. I'm sure if we have a block in the back. Yeah, it was a pretty aggressive flag. It was a, I mean, usually you get a block in the back during that. We'll see what it is. I'll tell you what, I know the score doesn't show, but it's been a hard-fought game, especially defensively, a big chess match, and both offensive coordinators are trying to figure out something, <laughs> you know, trying to hang their hat on something. Haven't seen the signal from the officials yet, but everybody's walking backwards like the penalty was against Tenora. I saw no official signal. <laughs> so we're going to go with blocking them back until we're, until we're told differently. Gosh. Definitely was a penalty against the Rams. I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm, I told you this before. I, I, you know, Lima Senior LCC Stadium, just great stadium, great area, very hospitable. Um, a lot to be proud of over here. Now Tenora with the ball on the 35 yard line, Eckert in the shotgun. Under four to go here in the third quarter, 7 0 lead. Eckert. Going to keep it himself, but no going that time as LCC does a great job filling the gaps. Yeah, Eckert has right now a total of 14, 15 yards right now on about seven carries, six carries. So um, they, they've really done a good job of, of stopping him. But again, Brandon Edwards, I mean, they just haven't stopped him between the tackles yet. So, um, yeah, I'm a little surprised at how uh, much they've ran Eckert tonight, too. Coming in, only had eight yards rushing on the season, but. They've called his number quite a yes, bit tonight. More than we thought they would. Here's your wing tee. Now Eckert. Ball to Edwards. He tries to get a few yards. He stopped after a short game to bring up third and long. And again, it look, you look, you see that play and you get a little bored with it. But I tell you what, that's 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 your offense and, and you got to hang your hat on that too james Patton did a great job five foot ten 225 senior number 53 defensive attack for lcc makes a great play right there and just hangs on um while while edwards is, is just trying to use his legs to get um momentum now we got another passing down again lcc's forcing tenora to throw the ball i'd be surprised if it's a play action pass i i don't know why you do a play action pass on third 11. Now Eckert, under center, is going to keep it himself. Tries to go for the option that time. Pitched it away, and Edwards has to fall on it. They're going to have some flags on the field. So maybe have another holding penalty. 
Yeah, they'll, they'll probably decline that if it is a holding penalty to go to fourth down. It's going to be a chop block, it looks like. Uh, they can't. That's declined. They can decline it. That's a 15-yard penalty, though, chop block. And it's at where the block is. So with the offensive struggles that LCC might have had, they might want to take that penalty and then force uh, Tenora to get some more yardage. But they, they decline it. So it goes back down to fourth down. So clock going to continue to run as Bishop goes back for the punt. Matthew Quatman and Salka Jenny back to receive. Bishop's punt is away. It's going to bounce, and it's going to come to rest at about the 37, 38-yard line, and that's where LCC is going to go back to work on offense. You know you've had a defensive uh, game when the uh, punters are going to have to ice their leg um, because we've had seen a lot of punts tonight, we, or today. We really have, and uh, um, it's it's like we said, it's, it's been a defensive game game and offensive struggle tonight for both teams and I think uh, LCC is more shooting themselves in the foot a little bit more the second half um, than they have been struggling I think one series they struggled but other than that you know they, they've had some momentum you know it seems like the opportunities are there you know the, the chances have been there Just yep. they, they need this O-line to, to come up big here and try to give Parker yes. a little bit of time Parker's going to pull it down, trying to get through the hole up the middle, but nothing was there. So he's going to get stopped for about a gain of maybe a yard. Yeah, Landon Newsom did a great job of taking on the trap from uh, James Pat. Uh, that was a trap right up the middle and a uh, quarterback trap. Or you can call it a quarterback zone trap if you want to. But uh, Pat did a great job of uh, trying to trap Newton, but Newton did a great job of defending him. Second and nine for the Thunderbirds. Parker can try to air it out on the cross route. This time, Quatman and him were able to connect for the first time tonight. As that's a Union Bank first down. Matthew Quatman with a gain of about nine on the play. And LCC has a little something going here on offense. Yeah, Cole Andrews on the, on the defense there. But I tell you what, that, that's probably one of the easier passes and catches to have. And I was really surprised they haven't thrown a slant yet um, in a while. But that's just a slant. Nice, easy pass catch, first down, little momentum for LCC. First and 10 from the 48-yard line. Parker keeps it himself one more time. He's got space this time. Big gain as he wants, goes to spin around, takes a big hit. Looks like he's going to gain enough for the first down. He's a little slow to get up. You know, Carson, he's a, he's a big player. He takes a lot of hits, though, and, you know, when he's running, he gets that first one, he tries to spin off. He takes a lot of shots in the back like that, and those start to add up. And you can, you know, I know he's young and I know he's strong, but <laughs> you only a, take so much. Yeah, as a coach, you got to find maybe, uh, think about maybe a ways of seeing if you can't get him hit just a little bit less. Yes, you're exactly right. Kid's going to be in the ice bath tonight. Parker sends Cutlip in motion. Handoff, though, goes down to leave that as Sarah. Area up ahead for roughly two, three yard gain on first down. Yeah, I got to talk about Sarah and the play before that with Carson. Sarah did a great job of a lead block to spring Carson up for another six or seven yards. I think those kids aren't talked about enough sometimes uh, because, you know, Carson, he can't do it all himself, you know. So Sarah did a great job with that block there. He's six foot one, 185 senior. 20 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. We'll see if LCC wants to get another play ran before we see the third quarter come to close. Parker takes a snap. Going to try to go off that left side. Stiff arm one, stiff arm two. Ends up out of bounds with four seconds left to go. Nice gain on second down to make it third and short. And this is what we usually see from LCC, chunk, 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 chunk. And it's a chunk meaning like four or five yards, four or five yards. Pass, throw, pass, throw, pass, run. So he did a good job of mixing things up, keeping Tenora on their heels here. You can see a lot of kids putting their hands on their hips. and It's a hot, humid day. A lot of kids running around. And, uh, 
you're getting some tired. I'm feel you just feel the tension in the air. You feel like there's going to be a big play. You know, LCC's been looking for that this entire game. Have gotten close a couple of times, still haven't connected. But you got to think that's it's on the horizon. Yes. Parker right up the middle on third down. Looks like he's going to have enough for the first down, but that's going to bring the third quarter to a close. LCC, they're driving, trying to see if they can't get their first points on the board. When we return, it'll be the fourth quarter on WOSN. Welcome back. Yosemite Cemetery's tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. LCC on the wrong end of the scoreboard, currently down 7 0, but they're driving. Carson Parker working off the right side. He's been taking a lot of hits tonight, trying to get this offense going. For the first time in the entire game, we're seeing the T Bird offense finally getting a little bit of rhythm as. They've picked up several Union Bank first downs here on this drive. Yeah, they have. Even even though uh, Aiden Heimke and uh, Joey Geisinger um, did a great job of stuffing the hole, he still ran for three yards. Second and seven for the T-Birds. Parker looking to air it out. Another slant. This one is picked off. Grady Gusweiler, and it looks like he may go all the way. 30, 20. And this is going to be a pick six, a huge turnover for the Tenora Rams. And, you know, we talked about the big play, and we kept giving the T-Birds the benefit of the doubt on the big play. But the big play came from that Tenora defense, which has been stepping up all game. Golly, I tell you what, tight end slash linebacker Grady Gustweiler just did a phenomenal job of catching the ball. I mean, that ball was probably clocked at 100 miles an hour. And uh, I tell you what, Grady did a great job of catching it and then did a superb job of running down the sideline because usually when you get an interception, you got to treat it like a punt return. Right down the sideline, it's exactly what he did. He capitalized on that. We just felt like there was going to be a big play, and it looks like Tenor's defense came up with a huge play to really, really deflate LCC's momentum. We saw an interception to begin this second half by Matthew Quatman as extra point is no good. Thought that might be a turning point for the Thunderbirds. They weren't able to do anything with it, but with 11-12 left to go in this game, Tenora comes up with a huge pick six and extend their lead to 13 to nothing. Yeah, and I tell you what, I mean, I mean, Tenora is coming down here and just making a statement. And uh, I, I, I mean, to, to put a zero up there against LCC's high-powered offense is extremely impressive. And I guess kind of kind of shows that you know speed speed is the factor to uh, really control this LCC offense, and uh, they're they're blitzing uh, seven, six, seven guys at a time, and just saying, listen, if he can get it off and make a big play, so be it. But we're saying you're not going to do that, and it's exactly what. You know, Tenora did. They're running cover two and running man and and running more man than anything else. And they're just saying, my guy's going to be better than yours. And so far, it's been doing that. The Rams now getting ready for the kickoff. As this becomes a must-score drive for the Thunderbirds. As, you know, there's still a lot of game to be played. As there's still 11-12 left to go in the fourth quarter. But with the struggles that they've been having on offense, you got to think that they've got to come away with some points here. Yeah, and, and Tenor's offense will grind up about four minutes even if they don't get a first down, you know, just because they're a rushing offense. Kick is away. It'll be gathered in by Matthew Quatman. Quatman works towards the middle of the field, up the hash, tries to cut back out to the right side, and that's where he's going to be stopped as LCC is going to come back onto the field on offense at the 22-yard line. So if LCC scores real big in the next two or three minutes, Tenor's offense is still going to run about four minutes off the scoreboard, which is going to give LCC again only three minutes left to go to score again for the second time. So to say that LCC needs a big hitter is an understatement. They need a big play right now. You know, I guess that is the one thing, you know, with this LCC offense is, you know, even if maybe they don't score here, you know, this is a team that can score quickly. They can, yes. they can yes. get a lot of yardage very quickly. And you, so you can't ever count them out. Yep, exactly. 
Wadman, the far sideline, one-on-one matchup. Football going to go to Gajani. Does a great job of catching that with his hands. That one was almost tipped away. Good throw, good catch. That's going to bring up second in about five, about five yards. Yeah, that's just called a pitch and catch. I mean, he catches the ball, throws it, and they catch the ball, get us you know, six, five, six yards. And again, though, like you said, though, Tenor's defense was just there. You know, they're always just there because of their speed. Four receivers for the Thunderbirds. Parker going to air it out one more time. This time out to Quatman. Quatman shakes loose. This is what we were talking about. He has the ability to score quickly. And that time, more than enough for another Union Bank first down for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, now they're starting to do more of a pitch and catch, quick hitters, uh, three-step drops type of uh, passes, which I think is very conducive to uh, gaining a lot more than you think because when Quatman gets that ball in the open field, he's going to get more than five or six yards. First and 10 from 48 yard line. Parker gonna air it out one more time. Gajeni this time. He's gonna pick up about six on that catch. Yeah, nice catch on Gajeni's part, but I think they're gonna set up a hitch and go. They're gonna set up some type of out and up. I mean, they have to. I mean, you, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta take that chance and throw it vertical because that'll also stop the clock if it's incomplete. We're finally seeing a little bit of rhythm out of this LCC pass offense. Alternating sides right now, trying to move down the field. Parker looks at his wristband, takes the snap, going to carry it himself up the middle. And just nothing there as the Tenora defense closed that gap very quickly. Yeah, Graham Askins, uh, again, he didn't make the tackle, but he took on the trapper to make uh, Grady. Weiler, Gus Weiler, make the tackle. So he's just, it's just a bunch of unselfish kids out there in Tenor's defense, you know, causing things to happen. So, like you said, LCC's got a rhythm going, you know. Uh, let's see if they can keep it. Third and five for the T-Birds. Got to be two plays. Over the middle, pass caught that time. That one's going to be caught by number 22, Matt Sarah. And, and again, like we talked about, three-step drop, pass. Three-step drop, pass. That's what they're getting success on right now. So they shouldn't go to the rollout. They shouldn't go to the deep ball right now unless they want to go some type of a hitch and go. And what you're seeing is um, the DBs, the safeties, taking a couple of yep. steps back, yep. trying to protect against that. That time, Sarah was able to take advantage through the middle of the field. The recognition by Parker. Now they're going to go for the deep shot. He's behind the defender. Wow. What a throw. What a catch. LCC finally on the scoreboard behind the arm of Carson Parker. You're exactly right. Behind the arm of Car Carson Parker, which really he's done a lot with his legs the first two games. And now they say, listen, Carson, we need your arm and we need you just to at least give us a shot. And that's exactly what he did. He gave him a shot and athlete on athlete came up short on Tenora's part. And you had to know that at some point, yep. Parker and Quatman were going to connect. And that time, Parker just dropped it right into the hands of Quatman and he made sure he did not drop that one. So the extra point is up. And it is wow, good. barely in there. So with 8:45 left to go in the game, LCC finally finds some success on offense. Cut this lead down. So they are only down now, 13 to seven. We will step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. Yosemite Cemetery is tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by the Union Bank. Union Bank is committed to you. LCC, after being held scoreless through the first three quarters, they found some success here in the early part of the fourth. Carson, Paul, Carson Parker excuse me, connects with Matthew Quatman for the long touchdown is now Tenor is going to get the ball back to try to see if they can't score or at the very least eat some time off of this clock. 
Yeah, and, and Carson has been uh, completionless, if that's a word, for the first three quarters or at least halfway through that third quarter. But then all of a sudden he's found his mark. He's found his mark. He's gotten his rhythm back. And uh, hopefully for the LCC's point, it's not too late. We'll see if it is. And and we talked during the break a little bit. Let's see if Tenora will stay focused on the task at hand. And what's the task at hand? To run that ball and not get tricky with it. Run it between the tackles and see if you get three or four yards of crack. You've got to think, you know, they just saw that they gave up the touchdown, but they've got to have a lot of confidence yes. in that defense. Yes. Right now, nothing that will stop the clock. Edwards takes the pitch off the left side, keeps his legs moving. He's going to be stopped after a gain of about four or five yards. Going to bring up second down. Yeah, Edwards just got to keep that clock. Well, I mean, that's a five-yard gain. And if you're a Tenora's coach right now, you got to be applauding that, getting on your players to say, this is what we want. We keep it out of Parker's hands, and we continue to run that clock. You know, so this is what Tenora needs to do to win the game right here is to have a nice long drive. They only need to score. Just have a nice long drive down the field. Um, Carson wants that ball back, though. Second and six from the 39-yard line. Eckert under center, three in the backfield. Motion now just two in the backfield as Anders is going to go. Runs towards the far sidelines. Knocking house, trying to work off the right side. Going to get back to the line of scrimmage. But we're going to have a penalty. Usually it's in a holding area. And I don't know why they're running Dock and House, but it is what it is, and, and I get it. Um, I think he's only had a handful of yards here tonight, um, especially outside against this fast LCC defense. It is going to be holding on the Rams, so that's a big penalty for Tenor as they were trying to just run some clock. Yes. Now they're going to have a third and very long situation. You could feel just something's going to happen special with LCC. You know, it's just everything's kind of falling apart right now for Tenora. Uh, they're in the worst case scenario right now. I know they're winning, but third and 15 is not a offensive play in Tenora's playbook right now. You know, they just they can't. They haven't found the pass yet. They haven't found completions yet. But good for them. They, it's only second down. It's be so. Second and 18 for the Rams. Second and 18 for Tenora after the penalty. Clock is still running. And now you got to think that's right now Tenora's main concern is, mm -hmm. is to keep that clock running. Eckert, go to the air. Gets wow. rid of it. What a play. Edwards trying to get up over the 40-yard line, and he's going to go out of bounds at the 41. What a great play that Simon. The only negative is that Edwards ended up out of bounds and that stopped the clock. Yeah, and that's exactly right. And I, and I think everybody and all the coaching staff's fine with that. But like you said, that's the only negative because what a great play call to look one way and then go the other way, almost like a reverse screen is what it was without any blockers in front and just relying on Edwards' legs. And his legs picked up a good 12 yards. So now it's a third and very forgiving four yards here. He's able to race away the penalty yardage and pick up a few more. Third and four for the Rams. Ecker going to take it. Gonna try to go himself, get to the outside, just try to get to the first down yardage, and he does. A huge play by Ecker at that time. Gavin Ecker with the extra effort, able to get across the first down. And that's a huge play for the Rams. Yeah, Eckert, 5'10", 165-pound senior, did a great job with his legs right there just along the outside. Hasn't had too much, like we talked about, hasn't had too much success with his legs. But I tell you what, that's a big first down that will continue to run another three minutes off the clock at least if they just – those at least three plays so it's going to bring them down to about under five about five minutes then a little bit under five minutes and if they can pick up another first down they're going to force lcc yes. to have to start thinking about when they're going to use their exactly. timeouts so they can try to get this ball back there's Knocking a quick hit right up the middle goes almost completely untouched yes what a great run by docking house as Dallas was able to find some space to the middle of that Thunderbird line, and that's going to be another first down. Did you see how quick that hit? I mean, that was what we talked about that really 
hurt LCC's defense is the quick hitter. And of all people, Dockenhaus, who has, a, again, a handful of yardage tonight, gets another big first down for Tenora. Again, you can kind of hear that air going out of the balloon a little bit, but, you know, LCC needs a big stop right here. Defense needs to step up, try to see if they can't get this ball back. Eckert under center. Hand off the Dockenhaus off the right side. He's going to be pursued and going to be taken down after a gain of about three yards, but he did stay in bounds, which is the important thing for the Rams right now. Yeah, that is the most important thing for the Rams right now, and, and Matt Sarah did a good job of pursuing that, just just speed of that young man. I tell you what, that was a great, great speed. Six foot one, 185, uh, 20, number 22, just did a great job of pursuing right there. So um, unfortunately for LCC, though, he was tackled in bounds, keeping that clock going. Second and eight for Tenora, 5.28 left to go in the game. We also know that Jacob Bishop does have a leg, missed a 42-yard field goal earlier, but just barely as it bounced off the crossbar. Yes. As you see Dockenhouse fighting for extra yards that time. That's going to be awful close to another first down. Yeah, he's averaging almost 10 yards for the last two carries that he's had. Again, like we talked about, quick hitters, you know, quick hitters. Third and one for the Rams. They pick this up. LCC's not going to have any choice. They're going to have to start burning their timeouts. Yes, yes. And, and I think everybody knows it's going to be Dockenhaus or it's going to be Edwards, but it should be between the tackles with a quick hitter. Some type of belly or power here. Ecker takes it himself. There Gets you the go. extra push from his teammates as Edwards just continues to drive him. At a certain point, if you're a coaching staff, you're like, it's okay, we got it. Yeah. Go down, go down, go down. It's okay. <laughs> you're exactly right. You don't want to get anybody injured, but that's a uh, that's a play that is now in everybody's repertoire just because the rule has changed. Uh, three years ago, you were not allowed to push an offensive player, but now you are allowed to push an offensive player if you are on the same team. And so what they do is basically quarterback sneak and push him from the back as many yards as you can get in the first down clock continues to run 405 left to go in the game Tenora on the move as Dockenhouse just jumps through the middle there picks up another four yards and LCC is not going to have any choice here pretty soon they're going to have to start burning yeah timeouts. they got to start having their timeouts because right now that's their worst enemy right now and Parker is just waiting to get the ball, and they had a lot of momentum on offense. And right now, it's about a 60-yard drive is what they had. Now, the good news for LCC is we know they can score quickly. We yes. know they can pick up a lot of yardage yep. uh, very fast. But you know, first and foremost, they got to get a stop here. Yes. On defense. Yeah, they got to get some type of stop. Take a chance. You know, they're going to blitz some backers here. We'll see what happens. That's what they're doing right now. Middle backer. That's Sarah. Eckert with the misdirection that time. Looked like he was going to toss it out to Edwards. Ended up handing it off on the inside. It's going to bring up another third and short for the Rams. Yeah, good tackle by six foot two, 215-pound senior Jacob Locke. You know, did a great job right there on the tackle. Uh, if he didn't make that tackle, we probably would have got the first down. Huge third down for Tenorth. Yes. Third, third and three, 250 left to go. They can pick up another first down. It's going to become desperation time for the Thunderbirds. If LCC can get the stop here, they still got to worry about the field goal. Exactly. Eckert under center. Going to take the snap, hand it off Dockenhouse up the middle. LCC does a great job that uh, time. I think he's short. He's going to be short. It's going to bring up fourth and short <laughs> and a huge call for Tenora. They're going to call timeout. They got to call timeout and think about it. Though, see, I'm so surprised. Okay, LCC calls a timeout. LCC going to call a timeout with 2.21 left to go. They're going to talk about it. We'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Spark Stadium. A huge fourth down here as it looks like Tenora is going to go for it as Eckert comes out. Interesting to see if they try to go for the hard count and then call another timeout. 
They're going to hand it off. Dockenhaus up the middle. Oh, he stopped. I don't know if he got I it. Think... It looks like the officials are running in right at the 15-yard line, which is what they needed. We'll see. It's all going to depend on the spot. It is going to depend on the spot. Uh, this official over here, it looks like he didn't pass the line. They put it right on but, the 15, which should be enough yeah, that for should be first enough. down. If I was their coach, I'd still check it. <laughs> they are going to check it. I tell you, I like what LCC did, though. They took McKee, uh, 5'11", 320 put him over the center and just had him fire out hard and the initial stop like you said I think he didn't get it initial stop he didn't get it but I think it was that second effort that got it to him that got him to be able to make that first down if Tenoris picked this up it's only going to be by maybe the nose of the football LCC stopped it is going to be huge from our angle we got some officials we can't see. Wow. First and, down, LCC. And they prevented it. And as the officials walked away, we got a little bit of a look down there. And it maybe was centimeters. <laughs> maybe. There had to be the smallest exactly. amount of margin on that mark yes. that time. But that gives LCC some life. As now they're going to need to go 85 yards with 216 left to go to try to see if they can't win this game. And they got two timeouts, you know, and LCC does a great job with timing routes, outs, um, uh, just, just a play where you can get out of bounds. So you don't have to worry about wasting your timeouts. So Carson was in a rhythm before. We'll see if he stays in that rhythm here. So drama and tension here at Spartan Stadium. If you stuck with us this long through the defensive battle, you got a treat on your hands with 2.16 left to go. Carson goes to throw, gets it out to Gajeni, out to the 20-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds. So that helps LCC as the clock stops with 2.11. Yeah, four seconds ran off that clock. He had a six-yard gain. So, and you know it's going to be four, four downs. I don't think everybody's worried about the downs, but more or less the clock. So it'll be interesting to see if Tenora does any sort of adjustments as LCC has come out looking like they're going to run this drive the same way they did the last one. These quick slants, these quick outs. See if Tenora tries to jump any of the routes. Out to Quatman. Quatman almost broke that one free. Yes. Gets tripped up just at the end, but that's still good enough for a Union Bank first down. I tell you what, Tenora is playing man-to-man, -man, but they're playing off about 10 yards. So they're giving up the hitch. They're giving up the curls. They're saying, listen, if you guys can go all the way down the fields, hitches and curls, so be it. Let's see if LCC can do it. Parker going to go to the air one more time. Rolling to his right. Here comes the pressure. Throws it deep. Trying to lead his receiver. Gets rid of it. Does a great job to not be tackled in the backfield. That's going to bring up second and ten. That's maturity. That's maturity on Parker right there. I mean, that was probably one of the best passes he threw all day, which is out of bounds. They cannot afford to give up a sack right here. There's no way. And so he did a great job of throwing it out of bounds, and now it's second and ten. Right now, it's just about trying to give him a little bit of time. Yes. We've seen it pretty much all game where the receivers have been able to get some open space. They just haven't been able to take advantage of it as Carson has, has struggled to get a little bit of time in the backfield. Cutler finally gets set as he came to the near sideline. Pass goes to him over the middle, not able to hold on. That's going to bring up a third down. And an incomplete pass will stop the clock. Looks like a little uh, injury right now on a cut lip. Uh, doesn't look doesn't look good but the thing is what Tenora is doing is they got that man to man so if they're missing a the tackle he can run for a touchdown so it looks like Cutlip's going to get looked at by the trainer we'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN Welcome back. Tonight's first downs are sponsored by Union Bank. The Union Bank is committed to you. Glad to see Cutlip able to walk off under his own power. As LCC now getting set up for a big third down. Got a new receiver in. Mylon Cowan is checked yes. in for Cutlip. Parker going to roll it towards the sideline. Throws it deep, looking for Cowan. Cowan trying to come back to the football. Where is the flag? Wow. And there is no flag. Oh, man. 
I, I, that's a hard one to, to assign with the officials on. Is Mylan clearly was trying to come back to that football. Oh the defender was not letting him, wasn't playing the football at all. And his head wasn't turned. That was the big thing. His head was not turned. Like you said, it's hard to agree with the official on that. It really was when you're – I can see if he turned his head and he tried to at least make an attempt to the ball, but it was a face guard is, is all you can say. It was just face guard. But I tell you, he had a step on him, though, and, and Carson probably should have let him – I mean, should have threw the ball a little farther. You know, Mylan, uh, he's only a sophomore, but he is somebody with tremendous speed and – Looks like LCC is going to have to call a timeout as the play still clock arguing. was running down. It's, right. There's still some confusion as to what's going on. As they you thought see they'd Coach reset Palti it. Yeah. Maybe the play clock didn't get reset. Right. 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 And, 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 and he's right. It didn't get reset. I mean, it went right now. It didn't get reset. And unfortunately, LCC had to uh, burn a timeout on that. So now LCC, 141 left to go. A huge fourth down as it is fourth and ten. And you know, this is essentially the ball game, especially with having to burn that timeout right there. And, and what's interesting is Tenora has not changed. I mean, they don't have a prevent. They don't have a nickel. They don't have a dime. They started, and again, yeah, they went covered two every once in a while, but they started man-to-man -man almost the whole game, and they're ending the man-to-man. -man. So I got to, I mean, he, it, this is what got us here, I guess, you know, and, and he, they continue to get pressure on Carson and uh, they continue to give up that long play. But Carson needs to throw it there. And I don't think he has the time to throw it there when you got so many blitzes coming in your face. So um, one thing that I think LCC needs to do a little bit more of is just like a hook or a, a curl, because now you're one on one on a man to man guy. And if you make a miss, then you got the whole rest of the field. So we'll see what LCC's drawn up here for fourth and ten. Comes down to this for the Thunderbirds. Either continue the drive, or maybe your hopes of winning this game are over. Carson can't find anybody. Going to have to get rid of it. And he does. See if they can get the yardage. And it doesn't look like I they're going to have. I think he did. We'll see where it, it depends gets on where it's at. <laughs> it's going to be close. Why are you walking out to the hash? You don't do that as an official. You put it down where it was. <laughs> You walk it off to the hash and you maneuver left and right. And I think that's what one of the officials is coming <laughs> oh up gosh. to tell them. And they're going to say first down. Oh, my so gosh. Carson Parker able to keep, keep the things moving in the backfield, staying alive. You can see the Tenora coach yeah. not happy about I'm, the spot. Oh. As, <laughs> but what a heads up play yes, by Carson you're exactly Parker. exactly right. Yes. Sarah had a great catch. And now. LCC with a fresh set of downs and a minute 32 left to go in the game. And he was out of bounds, so good. Parker going to go to the left. Let this one fly. Another completion. This one's to Quatman. Quatman shakes free, gets down to the 40-yard line. And what's nice in high school is the clock stops when there's a first down to set the down markers. And so they got to get the play in right now. 1.23 left to go, and the clock starts. CC gets set. Parker in the backfield. Zero lined up with him. Pass goes out and it is caught. Good Jenny. And they're going to either have to say incomplete or a fumble. Which one are they going to say? And they're going to say a The clock is still ticking. And they're, okay. they're going to say it was a completion and that he was down prior to the ball coming loose. So clock is running. 13-7. Tenor still on top. A minute left to go. LCC with just one timeout. Second and eight. This is a mess. And now the <laughs> officials are trying to figure out some of the clock issues. Exactly. Coaches are asking some questions. You, some of the fans also asking some questions. <laughs> Holy mackerel. The clock is still going on when the officials are talking. How is that happening? Parker. And we're going to have wow. a false start, LCC. This is – look, look at – Coach Palti not happy with what's going on in the field right now. I'm sure some frustration with some of the clock issues, some of the officials, and with his team now picking up a big penalty. As you can see, the Tenora coach on the field, he's also asking, even though some of this is benefiting his team, there just seems to be a lot of confusion yes. on the field right now. Yes, and a lot's not with the football players. Parker 
Takes a snap. Here comes the blitz. Changes direction. He's going to hold on to it for himself. He's going to be able to go out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. Great job by Carson Parker to keep that ball alive and pick up some positive yardage. I'll be honest with you. That was 30-some seconds run off the clock without a play, and the officials were, were just talking. So I don't know what happened. I don't know what went on, but something just wasn't right there for some reason. And, and, and the coaches have every right to be a little upset. Third down, third and six for LCC. 36 seconds left to go. Parker takes the snap, gets it off to Quatman. Quatman fights for the yardage, picks up the first down. Clock does stop. 31 seconds left to go. LCC is going to have to hurry. Coach Polt is calling for the it. spike. And then sure everybody's set. Stops it. And Clock one second yep. went off. So 30 seconds left to go. It's going to be second down. And the LCC is going to have it at the 25-yard line. I tell you what, what I, I mean, you might as well keep running the hooks. Keep running the hitches. Keep running the hooks because those are open on this man-to-man -man defense here. And LCC does still have one timeout. Unfortunately, yes. had to burn a timeout earlier in this drive. Parker rolls to his right. He's going to have to change direction. Stutter steps, throw, gets rid of it. It's going to be picked off. And this one's going to be taken all the way back. Braden Rotsai comes up with a massive pick six for the Tenora Rams, and they are going to come away with the victory. Carson Parker, he'd been keeping the drive alive. That time he tried to do it, tried to make something happen, knew that he didn't want to take the sack in that situation, and unfortunately it led to a pick six. We do have a penalty on the field. We'll see if that's going to have any bearing on this play. Yeah, I, I don't know if it will have any bearing, but I do know, you know, bless his heart, Carson Parker, he's just an athlete who tried to make something happen, you know. And it was a holding penalty against LCC. Tenora declines, and the pick six stands as Tenora comes up with the biggest play of the game in the biggest position of the game. Exactly. And, uh, and, he, and he can't fault Carson whatsoever for trying to make something happen um, in a situation where Tenora has been consistently getting pressure, pressure, pressure on that young man. And he just did what he could do, the best job he could. And it just came up short right now. You know, and you'd seen a, a player of Carson's caliber, he, you know, he continues to always give his team a chance. Yes. And he had done that multiple times to yes. keep drives alive, to keep plays alive. You know, we saw the big fourth down, yes. his ability to do just that, to keep that drive even going. As you see, the extra point is up and good. Unfortunately, that time for Carson, you know, going down, trying to make something happen, trying to just give his team an opportunity, you know, but it, it's hard to fault the effort, that is for sure. You're exactly right. You, you can't fault the effort. You can't fault the kid. I mean, he's a high school kid. You try to make something happen, and, and a lot of stuff was going against them this game. Uh, situations that we didn't even know was going on and uh, it is what it is and uh, he just did what he could have done and and uh, it, it, your heart goes out to him but also you know yeah, you, you, you got to give it up for Tenor's defense to uh, really stop LCC to only seven points I mean yeah LCC shot themselves in the foot every once in a while but I tell you what they had a great defensive plan, and uh, they, they, they did it, they accomplished it, and um, hats off to them. Yeah, this is a high-powered Thunderbird oh, offense. God, this is an offense doubt. that can put up yards, can put Scary. up points. 81 points in the first two games. And this Tenora defense came in, shut them down, came up with big stop after big stop, two pick sixes on the night, Yep. and, and those are the de that's the difference. You know, the exactly. defense of Tenora, and I'll tell you what, Tenora, a rough, rough week one. Yes. Right? Held shut out Liberty Center, which is going to be one of the top teams in the state when yes. this season is all said and done. And Tenora took that one on the chin. Regroup week two, came away with the victory, and then comes out here where if you ask a lot of people, <laughs> they would have, you know, this they would have thought this game favored LCC. That didn't matter to Tenora. They came in the great game plan on defense yep shut them down completely and they're coming away with a huge victory here in week two in week three yeah a huge huge is a, is an understatement you're exactly right this this is a victory that is 
going to open the ears and eyes of a lot of football teams and saying, you know, I, you look at Tenora right now. I look at their defense. I mean, they're, they're, they don't have big guys, but they have fast kids who listen and are well coached and and has done a great job. So, uh, hats off to that Tenora defense. But I guarantee you, this is not the end of the line for LCC. No, because and, they're going to regroup. You know that. And the schedule that LCC plays, oh, you know, it's crazy. It, it is. You know, they obviously are not in a conference, right? And so they have to go out and they make kind of a mismatch schedule, as. You see Sarah runs the football up the middle, and it looks like that is going to bring this game to a close as Tenora is going to take the victory 20 to 7. But to finish that ball before we, we get off air, you know, LCC, they have to make a mismatch schedule. Yes. That's just the nature of playing independent. Yep. And some years it's easier than others. This yes. was not an easy year for them schedule-wise. No. They play a lot of tough teams. They still have Bishop Hartley coming in. They got Huron next week. Yep. They're, they're going to be some tough games, and there's going to be some nights like this. And you can take away, you know, that old cliche, sometimes you learn more in a loss than a win. Yep. I, I don't, not everybody loves yep. that cliche, yep. but it is very <laughs> true. And as much as you'd much rather have that W, you know, LCC is going to be able to learn a lot Agreed. about themselves, and we'll see how they bounce back next week. Yeah, and they're going to bounce back. I think we all know that. We'll just see uh, what they have next for next door. So we'll see. And Tenora. Hats off once again, yes. played an excellent game. The offense may not have been as efficient as you would have liked, but it was as efficient as you needed them to be. Too. Yeah, and they knew that their strength was their defense. They, they knew that coming in. They know that all year it's their defense, and that's exactly what won this ball game tonight for Tenora was their defense. So that brings this game to a close from Spartan Stadium. Tenora comes away with a huge victory, 20-7 to over LCC. Yeah. It's been a fun game. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. For Nate Gar I'm sorry, for Bill Sammons, I'm Nate Garlock. There you go. We get our names right. It's yep. been an exciting last <laughs> exactly. two minutes of the game. Exactly. But we appreciate everybody for tuning in. Tune in next week for more high school football on WOSN.